Good day, grade 11s, and once again, we're back together. All right, and so today we're going to be looking at stoichiometry, everything that you need to know, and I'm going to try and break it down into a couple of videos so that, uh, you know, it's palatable and, you know, you are able to follow on into this lesson. So if you haven't subscribed, just make sure you're part of this family and hit that subscribe button. And if you're struggling with maths and science, hey, just give your uncle a ring and just uh, uh, all the information that you need will be on the description of the video. All right, now let's talk about stoichiometry. Now the, the fundamentals of what we need in stoichiometry is that one, we need to ensure that we've got a formula, a basic ratio of you know putting um, compounds together so that we can get a product right so i always make this analogy of you know suppose we wanted to bread uh, to to bake right to bake bread or you know muffins or whatever the case is right now let's say if i used three cups of flour and by the way ladies and gents this is my own made-up formula right it doesn't really exist okay Let's say three cups of flour and one cup of sugar will give me six muffins, right? All right, so of course I do acknowledge there are other ingredients that are involved, but I'm going to limit what we want to do to just simply flour and sugar, right? Now, does it mean that every time I want to bake, I'll produce six muffins? Absolutely not, right? However, what it does mean is that however many muffins I want to bake, if I really want them to be, you know, scrumptious and delicious, they have to adhere to this formula of mine, right? So let's suppose that for argument's sake, right? Here's our formula and we are given, let's say they tell us, I'm going to give you 40 cups of flour, right? Firstly, determine the amount of sugar that we will need. And as a result, also tell me how many uh, muffins will we be able to make, right? So supposing that flour in this case, you know, is already given, right? In a sense, and I'm introducing this word, is the limiting reagent. Now, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later right? And even perhaps in the next video, right? So if I say to you 40 cups of flour, right? So how much sugar would I need, right? So firstly, I need to be given a chemical formula. And by the way, this is where we are adding this word, a balanced chemical formula, right? And I'm, uh, we're going to learn how to balance ju in just a few Right, now let's check. This formula will help me to keep to a ratio so that I can always get to the right product, okay? So if I've got 40 cups of flour, right, how much sugar would I need? All I simply do, I start with my formula. Three cups of flour, right, will give me or rather will require one cup of sugar. So if I have got 40 cups of flour, then how many cups of sugar would I need, right? So what you do, this is called ratio and proportion, right? And all you simply do is to cross multiply. Please always make sure that the same thing, note flour and flour, are on the same side. So this is sugar and sugar. This is what we're looking for, right? So if we cross multiply three, right? We take only the coefficients multiplied by x will give me 3x. So there's that 3 times x and 40 times 1 and that will give me 40, right? So how many cups of sugar will I need? So divide that by 3, all right? And in this case, this will give me 40 over 3, right? Right, I think this will be, um, yeah, 20, uh, 40 over 3 should be, yeah, 13.33, right? So 13 cups and one third of a cup, right? 
So this is the amount of sugar that I will require in order for me to use up all the cups of flour that I have. Right, now let's determine how many muffins would I get. I'm still assuming that we'll use all the cups of flour, right? That is, flour is my limiting reagent. Okay, please just put an asterisk in your, in your mind about that word, right? So, in this case, it means that, well, how many muffins would we be able to bake? To bake? So, if one cup, or rather, three cups of flour gives us six cups of, I mean, six muffins, rather, then using all the 40 cups of flour, supposing that we've got an adequate amount of sugar, right? How many muffins are we going to bake? Right, and once again, do exactly the same thing, cross multiply. So we're going to say three times X, that will be three X. 40 multiplied by six, that will give us 240, right? Okay, yeah, 240. Now, if I divide this by three, that means that I will be able to produce 80 muffins, all right? And if you look at our ratio, it simply says three cups of flour will give us six muffins, which means uh, the amount of muffins that I make is always twice the amount of flour that I use, right? So look at this. If I had 40 cups, then I definitely expect that I'll make twice the amount, which is 80 muffins. And so our ratio looks uh, quite correct, right? Now, let me just get into it, ladies and gents. So I want us to learn how to balance chemical formulae, right? So let's start with that, and then we will proceed with the rest of our lesson. Now, let's try to balance the next um, equations, all right? So, the first one, so they give us the nitrogen, and we've got fluorine F2 giving us nitrogen uh, fluoride, okay, and F3 there. So, what we're going to do first is just to see how many nitrogens on the left-hand side and compare with those on the right-hand side. So, balancing an equation right of balancing a chemical formula simply means that we're going to put the coefficients and not the subscripts meaning these numbers at the bottom here right so we don't touch those we only adjust the coefficients right now let's get into it so nitrogen we've got two so which means we need to put a two there in order to balance it so now we've got two nitrogens and two nitrogens on the right hand side so that means this remains one okay um, remember without a number there it means that we've got one so now what we've done is that we've now made the number of uh, fluorides uh, two times three which is six so that gives us right to make it six on the left hand side we'll just simply multiply that by three three times two gives us six all right and that's how the first one goes let's move on to the second one so we've got six hyd uh, carbons and 10 hydrogens and oxygens right now look on the left hand side we've got six carbons we've got only one on the right hand side so in this case we need to multiply that by six right and we've got 10 hydrogens we've got only two on the right hand side how do we make that 10? So we multiply that by 5. 5 times 2 gives me 10. Okay, so that means the number of carbons, the number of hydrogens are sorted, right? But now what's missing? It's the oxygen. So in this case, on the right-hand side, right, we've got 6 multiplied by 2, which will give us 12. And we've got 5 multiplied by 1, that will give us five so on the right hand side we've got 17 oxygens right but we've got only two on the left hand side how do we make that 17 
Well, we're going to take a half of 17, right? Because if we take a half of 17 multiplied by 2, that gives us 17. Now note, ladies and gents, the number of moles can never, or our ratio in this case, can never be a fraction or a decimal. So we need to make sure that we all, with all the numbers, are whole numbers, right? So we're going to multiply by, in this case, the lowest common denominator, which is 2 in this case. So that's, that means everything multiplies by 2, right? So I'm going to say, well, 1 multiplied by 2 for the first one. That gives us 2, right? 17 over 2 multiplied by 2 gives us 17. And 6 multiplied by 2 gives us 12. And 5 multiplied by 2 gives us 10. And that is our balanced equation, right? So please make it a point that you get the gist of that. All right, now let's go to number 3. So ladies and gents, I want you at this point to pause the video, right? And try to do the rest on your own, okay? And you can resume and look at the solutions that I give you afterwards. Right? Hopefully you've paused the video and let's continue with number three. So on number three, we've got one hydrogen, two hydrogens on the left hand side. And on the right, we've got two hydrogens. So we're not going to make any adjustments for hydrogen. So we've got one bromide, one bromide, we're good. One potassium, one potassium. And finally, in this case, carbon, we've got one carbon. And we've got three oxygens on the left. That's one plus that two over there. That gives us three. So it looks like this equation is balanced which means every single one has got a ratio of one. Okay, right. And then let's go to the next one. So we've got gallium bromide, okay? So, and sodium sulfate. So in this case, what are we going to do, ladies and gents? Let's check. On the left-hand side, I've got one gallium. I've got two on the right-hand side. So... That tells me I need to adjust that by 2. Okay. Right. Now, in this case, the galliums are okay. But the bromides, I've now made 2 times 3, which is 6. And I've got only 1 on the right-hand side. So, which means I need to make those 6. Right. Remember that the coefficient multiplies to everything else in that particular compound. Right. So, six bromides we are okay with those and in this case i've got six sodiums right but i've got only two on the left hand side to make that six it means i need to multiply by three right and let's see if uh, right so we've got six sodiums we are okay with that right and three times sulfurs right so three times that sulfur there and the number of oxygens that's three multiplied by that three over there which gives us nine and we've got three multiplied by this three as well that gives us nine and so in this case this means this reaction or this equation is balanced all right and let's look at the last one okay and by the way this guy is called tin right i know that uh, you'd expect a t there as a you know um as an acronym but in this case we use or as, as a chemical symbol so we use sn for tin right so this is tin oxide uh, plus nitrogen fluoride right so in this case um let's look at tin so we've got one of that got one of that so no problem there We've got one oxygen but we seem to have three on the other side right so in this case 
what do we do okay so that means i need to make that three so that the number of oxygens are balanced but the moment i put a three there right that means that the number of tins is three and so on the right hand side i will need to also put in three right and we said three oxygens we've got three oxygens there no problem and so our nitrogen one nitrogen on the left hand side we've got two on the right hand side so that means that i need to balance that by making that two times right so two times three gives me six of the fluorines okay uh, two nitrogens rather but it gives me now six fluorines and by the way so we've got three times two on the right hand side that gives us six as well so it looks like all of these reactions are balanced ladies and gents right so this is what is most important the balancing of an equation when we do stoichiometry stoichiometry so that you are able to um, deal with ratio and proportion ladies and gents i'm going to leave this lesson here before i spoil the pot any further right leave this lesson here ladies and gents um in this case we're going to be looking next at calculating the number of moles or even the mass you know when given the mass of something else right so please look out we're going to be doing stoichiometry and i promise you by the time that you finish you'll not only be a champion in this section but you'll also love chemistry ladies and gents i'm gonna leave this lesson here i'll see you guys again next time from me your favorite uncle shop shop <laughs>